How much time did you get with Mark? Um, I went and talked to him a couple of times uh, and uh, also asked him some questions over email. Unlike a lot of these guys. I mean, you don't... Be Bezos does interviews very rarely. Uh, Tim Cook, only calculatedly. But Mark seems fairly available and fairly open. He's going to be taking time off soon, right? He's, he's be... taking off a couple of months. He yeah. could take up to, up to four months of, of paternity leave. Priscilla having he's a baby. He's doing two. Yeah. He's actually a tough interviewer, too. He, Is he? He'll talk for he's stuff savvy. he cares about. And he, yeah. he cares about AI and VR and especially what he's doing, which is actually really controversial in some quarters in terms of um, bringing connectivity to other countries, uh, connectivity, which is somewhat Facebook-centric, um, Internet Org, the thing they created, um, is uh, attempting to bring Internet almost everywhere on Earth. Right, so they can um, use Facebook because right. it, it's really basically bringing Facebook to everywhere. And it for, you know, particularly because it's called Internet Org, which suggests it's the entire Internet right. and is a nonprofit. Um, some people aren't that crazy about the fact what they're giving you is not the entire internet, uh, and it's not a nonprofit. I mean, r right now it's costing Facebook money, but over time, if if they want to grow and grow and grow, they will need more countries to have consumers, and have consumers who care about Facebook. Philip, you've been watching this space for a long time, and I've wondered this for a while. It's really easy. Uh, Humans are very narrow in our perception. We don't see the long view of anything. So it's really easy to assume that the dominant industries today will be dominant forever. You know, we just think it'll always be Facebook and Google and Twitter. And it's clear that from the history of technology, which you and I have both covered for decades, uh, you know, Microsoft isn't the Microsoft of yesteryear. IBM's not the, uh, the, the IBM of yesteryear. That there's a natural cycle to these businesses. And really after 10, 20 years, somebody else comes along. But it's starting to look like there are some incumbents, like Google, Facebook particularly, Google perhaps, that might break this mold, that might, in fact, is that we're done, that like these guys are going to be here for 400 years. Is that crazy talk? Yeah. Okay, well, good. Um, I feel better. <laughs> well, you know, the, the theory of disruption, which is um, probably the only coherent um, theoretical basis for talking about these businesses says that the the companies when a company grows big and successful and listens very closely to its clients and tries to improve itself in response to their needs will eventually get eaten from below the by inno the, the innovators dilemma right um and you know the the, is Facebook at the point where it's over-serving and that someone could come along and offer uh, and, and start to take the parts of the business that Facebook isn't interested in uh, and and make money doing that and then eventually improve to the point where it would take uh, eat, eat Facebook seed corn? I can see that happening. Uh, and it's the it's really the rare company uh, that that can that can disrupt itself. And and be willing to sacrifice its its you know where its uh, main business comes from, in order to to go in a completely different direction. There's an old saying that that if um, you know famously Microsoft missed the ball uh, on the internet and and mobility, right. and uh, but if Steve Ballmer had gone to the board of directors and said. You know, uh, mobility is the next thing. We got to chuck windows and throw everything into mobility. He would have been fired. Because you'd kill your uh, cash cow. Yeah, yeah. Harry, are there, so, I mean, surely Mark Zuckerberg's no no fool. He knows about the innovator's dilemma. And, uh, and do you have the sense that he's aware of this and trying to beat the, beat the odds? I mean, I think acquiring Oculus is attempting to get ahead of where the market is. Yeah. Um, could, because in theory, VR is something that could reset the market in the same way that the PC reset the market for, for computers a few decades ago, and, and then the internet reset the market, and then mobile did. So, so we just uh, don't know what's coming down the pipe well, that right. might can reset I, the market. And, and Facebook, can I just jump? I, sorry, go ahead. I, I just want to say, Facebook has the general marketing strategy that is uh, a timeless tradition. You know when. 
Christians wanted to spread the word, what do they do? You go to third world countries, you build a school and a church, and you bring them Bibles. He is going out there, and he is building the internet, and he is bringing them Facebook, because that's how you bring he's, more people he into is, the flock. He? He's proselytizing and that's how you convert for more Facebook. People. So, I mean, when you sit there and you think about Facebook and his global reach, I mean, it's a very traditional marketing plan right. to bring people into the fold, and he is doing it, quote unquote, the right way. It's when traditional, but, who has but Owen, nothing, he has tools that people it, haven't had before. And he, and he has the tools that they need to make them love him. Yeah. So when you come there and you bring someone the future to which they have no knowledge of, right. it's like opening up the sky to them. They will have access to so many things they've had access to. So who are they going to be loved and be favored? Right. Facebook. So if Facebook rolls that out, I think that's the best thing they have going to sustain Facebook's dominance and growth. I mean, they're jumping in here in these markets and they're doing strategic moves in the markets. They're not chucking everything for mobile. They're like, look, let's go get ahead of the curve on this. If it flops out, it's not a big deal, but we're already there. But what we're still building the main concept of bringing people in to love us because guess what i don't really like facebook and all the stuff you guys are talking about i don't care because i am a cynical horrible person but when i see him going out and building this little spaceship plane that's going to be bringing internet to people who've never even had anything i say hey good for you mark you're a good dude. Normally, I don't think that about the guy. Yeah. But when he's doing things like that, it's indoctrinating, it's bringing in new people, and you look like a nice guy all at the same time. So I'm just saying, they might be around for another. We might be buying Google socks and Facebook cookies. I don't know. The, the Facebook, though, does run into the same problem that Google has, which is that Google basically is using um, – Money that it gets from the U.S. and Europe, that's who. That's where their advertising right. brings in revenue. Right. Uh, but their growth is dependent on spreading the Internet to the rest of the world. The problem with the rest of the world is that they don't spend like the U.S. and Europe does. So basically, you know, how, how does how, – at some point, Google and Facebook run out of world, and then how do they grow? <laughs> Micro economies. What is it? There's Tesla says we're going to Mars. Going to Mars, right? <laughs> people making money on the little cell phone transactions. There's a lot of things in micro um, economics that goes on in those third world countries that makes a lot of money. Yeah. So a lot of again, crumbs there, add up to potential. Pretty big to love. get into the market. Yeah. And so. Also, I mean, Mark Zuckerberg really does think incredibly long term. I think he's thinking about 20, 30 years from now, when some of these countries where people don't have a lot of money do become consumer markets. Um, he controls 57% of Facebook. He doesn't really have to care about what his board tells him to do. He doesn't seem too worried about the stock market. And he has a lot of patience. Um, he doesn't have to worry because he still owns a controlling interest yeah, he, in Facebook, he, which is unusual. No one can tell him what to yeah, do. And, it's really uh, amazing. And he really does have long-term vision in a way that, that other companies I guess that's, don't always show. That's not the question. I mean, certainly uh, the brightest minds at Google have been looking at this for their entire lifetime. Its question is only can you see that uh, light coming at the end of the tunnel and, and, and prepare for it properly? Well, they don't see it when it comes to social because they bombed at every turn when it comes to that. Google They better did, hope yeah. this car thing works yeah. out because that's, <laughs> that's the only cool thing I hear coming out of Google right now is them telling me I don't have to drive anymore on the weekends when I want to. But, you know, again, dipping your toe where you shouldn't do it, but they still have to try because one day they might hit a home run, but they haven't so far.